Contrary to what the name suggests, Dutch elm disease did not originate from the Netherlands. The name purely acknowledges the fact that it was identified by Dutch scientists Bia Schwartz and Christine Boisman. Most evidence points to Dutch elm disease originating from Asia, where many species of disease-resistant elms can also be found. Two closely related species of fungi, Ophiostoma ulmi and O. novo ulmi, cause the disease that we call Dutch elm disease, and the likelihood is that they evolved in various parts of Asia. Symptoms first appear in early summer, when leaves at the tip of the elm branches turn yellow and wilt. The effective shoots then die back and often form the shape of a shepherd's crook. As the disease takes hold further in an individual tree, more of the leaves in the canopy turn from yellow to brown. Towards the end of the summer, most of the foliage will have browned and withered. If you were to peel the bark away from twigs which still retain yellow or browned leaves, the wood beneath the bark will have dark streaks, indicative of blockages in the water conducting vessels of affected trees. The fungi that cause Dutch elm disease is transferred from diseased to healthy elms by elm bark beetles. These insects carry spores of the fungi on their bodies and in doing so spread the disease. These tiny dark brown beetles measure a mere 2 to 5 millimetres long and enjoy breeding grounds in the bark of dying and dead elms and when a new beetle family emerges from the bark in the spring carrying the fungus, they sadly transfer it to healthy elms as they feed on thin, sappy twigs high up in the tree canopy. Once the Dutch elm disease fungus has infected a tree and reaches the roots, it may then spread to neighbouring trees through interconnected roots. This occurs most commonly with elms in hedgerows with an interconnected root system. Some elms have genetic resistance or field resistance to the Dutch elm disease fungi. How genetic resistance arises is not totally understood, but scientists believe that a combination of resistance mechanisms helps these elms to survive. It is known that the structure of the water conducting system, known as xellum vessels, in the trees plays a critical part in limiting internal disease spread, allowing resistant trees to survive infection. In contrast, elm species with field resistance may lack genetic resistance, but despite this, often survive in areas where Dutch elm disease is widespread. In these circumstances, the elms tend to be less attractive to the feeding elm bark beetles, which spread the disease and so escape infection. More than 60 million elm trees are estimated to have been lost to Dutch elm disease in the United Kingdom since the 1970s. However, although most mature elms have gone, young elms are still plentiful as they regenerate from the roots of elms killed by Dutch elm disease or from the seeds of others. Sadly, these young elms rarely survive more than 15 to 20 years before being struck down by Dutch elm disease again. But a new cycle of regeneration will then begin. The most effective action against DED is to remove infected elms before they become breeding trees for the disease-transmitting elm bark beetles. Fungicide injection to cure infected elms can be effective, but is no longer considered a cost-effective way of combating the disease. Another approach is to plant disease-resistant elms, as many clones have been released from reputable breeding programs. Despite the vast number of elms killed by Dutch elm disease, they have shown themselves to be highly resilient. Some estimates suggest there are more elms in the countryside now than there were before the current epidemic took hold in the 1970s, although few of the mature elms from that time still survive. <laughs>